I literally like lit a whole ass candle. First off, I thought I was onto something. Like how riveting to light a candle in the back of a YouTube video. And now you can't even see it, but it's there in spirit. And you can also see where I horribly damaged my dresser when I spilled nail polish remover all over it. Hi, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. <laughs> Today, I might be creating something that I completely regret. I already do regret it. Just like the thought of it. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna try to like mentally set myself up for success. Hasn't been going great for me in other aspects of my life. Okay, anyway. <laughs> but before I jump into this video, I just want to shout out Alina who commented on my previous video. She said, you being angry at the card website for being stupid and then realizing you literally asked for this kind of website describes perfectly what I feel when I go on a Tinder date. I could not relate more. <laughs> if you want me to feature your comment in one of my videos, just leave a comment. If I like it, I might put it in. The street outside of my window is so loud and my window is closed. Like, I'm sorry if you can hear it. It's just like, I guess people have things to do, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, the 1950s, oof. They were a weird time in America. And tis the season to take a look back at some holiday traditions that kind of don't exist too much anymore, but uh, at the time seemed normal. But in retrospect, it's like, what? Actually, wait, what the f And considering the fact that Christmas itself kind of has strange traditions surrounding it, we've got a fat guy in a red suit who breaks into your house through your chimney, eats your cookies, drinks your milk, leaves presents under a tree, which belongs outside, but for some reason we bring it inside, and then we decorate it with a whole bunch of shit. Uh, and if that's not strange enough, don't worry, because his means of travel is on a flying magical sled, which is led by reindeer. Like, normal stuff to us, but like, really just take a step back and examine what's going on. Anyway, first things first, the aluminum Christmas tree. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it was popular in the United States from 1958 until about the mid-1960s. It is literally just a tree that is aluminum, and you have a rotating wheel of color behind it, so it changes the color of the tree. Interesting fact, the aluminum Christmas tree was used as symbol of the commercialized, commercialize, commercial, commercialize, commercialize, commercialization, 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 what the f commercialization, you get what I'm trying to say, of Christmas in the, in the highly acclaimed and successful 1965 television special, A Charlie Brown Christmas. As if aluminum trees weren't enough, let's throw some tinsel on there, why not? Just to make it a whole messy f robot of a Christmas tree. And if you had a real Christmas tree, uh, people would usually spray them with fake snow, which definitely had paint thinner and or asbestos in it. Great for kids, great for pets, great for around the house, great for the holidays. Then some people would decorate the Christmas tree with these little bubble, bubbler thing, bubbler things? Is that what they're called? Bubblers? Bubble something? My grandparents actually had that. I thought they were kind of cool. I've actually seen them as like a little, it's like a lava lamp. I've seen them as like a little plug-in, John, like a nightlight type deal. Let's bring those back. Those can stay, those are cool. Apparently the popularity of trains around the bottom of the tree came from the success of the Lionel Corporation. You know the one, Lionel. Lionel Corndick, Lionel Corndick, Lionel Corndick, Lionel Corndick, Lionel Corndick, Lionel Corndick, Lionel Corndick. Nah. And then there was the food. Dear, sweet, eight pounds, six ounce, newborn infant, baby Jesus, there was the weird food. I made a video, I want to say in the spring, it was a couple months back, where I tried to tackle a weird like 1950s, 1960s recipe called like a ribbon, a frosted ribbon loaf sandwich or something, which consisted mostly of chopped meats and mayonnaise. Nice and appetizing for you, just gonna plop it right, <laughs> right in there. It was a weird fever dream. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to go watch it after this. 
I'm gonna try my hand at one of the weird recipes they used to have back then. So something really popular, if you know anything about that between like the 50s and the 60s was uh, making things with gelatin. Jello was like massive. I'm gonna go ahead and follow a recipe to make a shrimp jello dish that I would like to bring to a party that I would attend in the 1950s, which I would have to attend with a girl because I would be very closeted and she would probably most likely have to be a white woman uh, because of segregation. The 50s in America, what a time. Is that straight? That don't look straight. That's what the camera's saying about me. <laughs> hi, okay, hi, welcome to my kitchen. I'm sorry I cook things. Uh, as I was getting all of this set up, I was listening to the Sinatra Christmas album. I wanted to like fit in with the times. Did I even? What year is this? 1957. Okay, false alarm. Can be in the video? Can we? Hello. See, I love you. Okay. This, it's a good album, but it's got some snoozers. <laughs> It's got some snoozers. So I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm kind of following a recipe because I want to be like, you know, authentic, but I'm also kind of doing my own thing. I'm an artist, I'm a free spirit. It's my artistic license to express myself through various forms of media. I don't know. What you're gonna need for this is Knox Original Gelatin, unflavored, vegetable cooking stock, frozen vegetable medley. We've got corn and peas, both of which are freezer burnt. We're just gonna stick with a winter theme here. If you have carrots, go ahead and throw some carrots in there. I do not, because I do not care at all for carrots. I do, I just saw an opportunity for a pun. Then of course, we have got our little shrimps. We got Huey, Dewey, and Louie. I'm only using three of them here because I want to kind of make a smaller version of this. I'm not trying to feed a party. I'm probably going to take a couple bites myself, regret it, possibly throw up, and move on from there. So I'm not trying to be that wasteful, okay? And finally, I have got pineapple chunks because why not? First thing I'm going to do is take a cup of vegetable cooking stock and bring it to a boil. I'm just gonna microwave it because it seems a lot easier. Then I'm gonna take a cup of cold water and I'm gonna take three, no, two, two of these gelatin packets and add it to the cold water. And I guess you just let it sit for a minute. So that's what I'm gonna do. Is gelatin really made out of horses? Cause I just watched Horse Sense last night and I'm not trying to eat horses today. That vegetable stock is boiling and it smells really bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it in to this bowl of jello. Oh wait, no, I'm supposed to let it sit. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Now that the cold jello has been sitting, I'm going to add the hot, smelly vegetable stock to the cold bowl and then mix for about five minutes. That is just a color that it should not be. So now that that is all combined, I'm gonna take this little bowl and I'm gonna put my little shrimps in it and kind of set it how I want it to look. Look guys, I have like a loose plan going on here. If it works out, I'll be amazed. That looks pretty good, right? This is so hard to do with one hand. Anybody wanna help? Okay. All right, so this is what we're working with here. Delectable, delicious, nutritious dominoes. Now that we got that all squared away, I'm going to take the completely cooled but not yet set gelatin mixture and I'm going to pour it over the top. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus Christ. Oh, this could have went so much better. Oh, God. <sighs> I 
Now that I've made a mess and I have vegetable stock jello on my pants, I'm gonna throw this in the fridge. Oh my god, how long do I have to do this for? Three hours. It'll be no time for you, but I have three hours. Mint. All right, it has actually been 24 hours. It is the following day. I put on the same dirty outfit to fool you. Gotcha. Let's get this thing out of the ice box. That was pretty retro of me. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see it? Can you see that? Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, so this is kind of what we're looking at here. Uh, we got some spillage on the bottom. Uh, interesting. So now I'm gonna attempt to remove the gelatin. Seems pretty solid in there, so let's uh, let's give this a go, shall we? Yeah, it didn't come out. So the gel is not coming out. Uh, thank God for YouTube. I'm going to take a bigger bowl, fill it with hot water, and put my Jello mold inside. Can you see the bottom of this bowl? I really messed it up when I decided to put popcorn in this bowl and put it directly on the stove top. I don't know if this water needs to be like hot hot. Nope, nope, don't, don't. Am I okay? Don't microwave a metal bowl. Do you see that? I promise it's a clean bowl. It just like doesn't come out because you know the story. So that's hot water. This is my masterpiece. Okay, and then I guess I just let it sit. All right, it's been sitting in here for like five minutes. I'm gonna try this again. <gasps> I think I did a thing! The moment of truth? <sighs> Bitch. Wow, it's got a very interesting consistency. Very gelatinous, if I do say so myself. It does look like almost all of the peas, or at least the peas that could escape, floated to the top, so it's pretty much just like corn and pineapple and shrimp at the bottom. It does look like murky swamp water. Uh, it just kind of smells like cold soup. I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not quite that. Uh, I guess let's cut into it and give her a give her a taste, shall we? Here goes nothing. Okay. I got myself a pretty decent forkful here. Uh, I got a little bit of everything. I got the jello. Oh, we lost a corn. I got some peas. I got pineapple. I got shrimp. And I'm gonna do this. Uh, happy holidays. Um, ah, oh, <laughs> woo, not bad. I think putting the pineapple in there really messed me up because I'm used to jello tasting sweet and that didn't, but it also did. Maybe it needs salt. Okay, let's try a little piece again. I just, like, I want to, I want to enjoy this. No, oh, no, it was just salty. That was just salty peas and jello. Ooh, ooh. <sighs> well, that was weird, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and the bell notification if you're to be notified every time I come up with a new video, which is every Tuesday and Thursday. I need chapstick really bad. Leave a comment if it makes me smile, if it makes my heart flutter, I'll include it in the next video. Uh, so until next time, Keep your Christmas traditions frickin' weird.